I'm Daisy Victoria, and today I am going to take you with me on a photo shoot of a historical gown. This is a really special gown. It's based on a 16th century German style. Now putting us in 16th century Germany, which at the time was still the Holy Roman Empire, is definitely a great way to start. We're gonna narrow it down even further because we're gonna nerd out because we love history. Yes, we do. This gown is based on some paintings by a very specific artist. His name was Bartholomew Brun or Barthol Brun, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Brun was from the northwestern portion of what is now modern day Germany. He is from Cologne which was in the Westphalian circle. This is also the Rhineland region. I really like this region for Renaissance era costuming because it is physically located in between the Netherlands on one side and sort of the rest of Germany on the other side. So when you look at the costumes, I kind of feel like they have a little touch of both regions and I just really like that. I chose to go with Brune's images as my inspiration for this project, and specifically I was looking at portraits that he did of some women right around 1540, so like 1538-1539 leading up to 1540. Brune also painted someone very famous, by the way, and that is Anne of Cleves, one of the wives of Henry VIII. You guys might have heard of him. He was pretty famous. The most famous portrait of Anne of Cleves was actually painted by Holbein, another artist I love. So I really wanted to keep my inspiration consistent <laughs> since I was recreating a specific style, at least a specific region and time period. I did exercise my right to be a little creative in the actual designs and patterns that I put onto the gown, but I did stick with, you know, what I could document in the images. Now in this era, there are a lot of layers in the clothes. It was colder back then. It is also colder now in Europe than it is in the United States. So we gotta keep that in mind here. So what are the layers of my dress? Well, layer one is a chemise or a shift. This is made of white linen, at least mine is, and that was really common in period. The purpose of this layer is to protect your skin and the dress from each other. So all the like oils and stuff on your skin gets into the shift and does not soil your dress. This allows your dress to wear much longer and to need less laundering than if you wore it against your skin. If you'd like to learn how to make your own chemise, I do have instructions for that. See below. Next, I have a partlet, which is a really lovely little neck decoration. This is really cool because it allows you to use the same chemise or shift with multiple looks. So if you are going for dresses that are from slightly different regions or different classes or what have you, you just want to look different, then you could wear the same chemise with different partlets and I think that's really cool. For this dress I also made little arm cuffs for my wrist to get that cute little ruffle that we see in the photos from the period or the paintings, I guess they didn't have photos. The next layer I have is the underdress for my court gown, but also can be worn as the main dress. This is known as a kirtle, and I also have instructions on how to make that, by the way, see below. My kirtle is made of silk taffeta. I went all out on this one. This was a really special dress. My kirtle is boned in the bodice, so it does provide some support. Um, you can actually get some support out of these garments without boning. Um, boning, of course, allows you to get a little bit more. My kirtle was made sleeveless with sleeves that tie on. I really like to do that because then, one, I can wear the kirtle without the sleeve. So if it's a little bit warmer and I still want to wear my cute dress, I can do that. 
I can also wear it with different sleeves. So if I want to switch them out, you know, do a different look, a different inspiration, and what have you, that's totally doable. So really cool. The outer gown itself is made of red cotton velvet with black cotton velvet banding, as well as a very pretty jacquard that I found. The entire dress is lined in red silk taffeta, so it is very warm. There is another partlet that goes on top of the gown. This one is black. It's made of that really pretty black jacquard, and it is lined in black linen. There's also a belt, which is made of black velveteen, and then it also has a gold trim. I also added some necklaces, and <laughs> The crowning achievement of this gown is the hat. The hat mimics those seen in the pictures. I made this using some millinery technique, using um, millinery buckram and millinery wire for the frame. The outside of the hat is made of cotton velvet to match the gown. And I used a variety of gold trims, which I hand sewed on. I also hand beaded the hat with lots of pearls. I think this hat is super pretty. I was very excited to make it and I just really like it because it's so unique and I feel so super fancy when I wear it. So now that you know all about this crazy gown from 16th century Germany, or you know, at least recreated like a gown from 16th century Germany. Let's go take a look at the photo shoot.